Hello and welcome to Plymouth Science Park's third Business Essentials webinar. Today we're joined by Anne McCluskey, from, who's founder of Finding True, More, True North. We're delighted to have you with us today, Anne. Thank you. Um, Anne has a wealth of experience providing support as coach, mentor, facilitator and mediator in both the private and public sector. And her previous roles have included Director of Human Resources within the NHS and Senior Associate with Corporate Soul Consulting. The psychology of work and culture change has been her passion for a number of years and she's developed expertise in organisational change and leadership development and steered organisations through a significant periods of transition. So we're absolutely delighted to have the benefit of your wisdom here today, Anne. Um, today Anne's going to be talking to us about how to survive beyond the corona coaster, very um, tips for self-care and well-being, so very contemporary and very useful I'm sure. So just before I hand over to Anne I would just say um, please put any of your questions that you might have as we go through the session into the chat, I'll monitor those and we'll have a Q&A session at the end so we can have um, a conversation and open it up to the floor. So yeah, please remember to put your questions into the chat. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Anne and um, look forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you very much, Faye. I'll just uh, share my screen now. Put it into the right format. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for inviting me, Faye. I'm delighted to be participating in the Business Essentials webinar series and um, hope to be able to join uh, the next one. So um, I'll say a little bit about myself before I go into uh, the talk per se. I um, spent the early part of my career as an organisational psychologist, uh, always interested in change in the work environment and how some people thrive with change and other people find it really stressful and um, so the impact on people with change was something that sort of was a, a theme throughout my whole corporate career. I spent most of my corporate career in the private sector and moved into human resources from being an organisational psychologist. And as I say, was heavily involved in large scale change, mergers and acquisitions, restructures, massive redundancy programmes and helping people come to terms with uh, job loss. So that's something that's followed me throughout my career. Um, as you say, coach leaders through transition. And now I work independently, as you said, for Finding True North. And that focus really is to give people the skills, whether it's individual business owner or executives, to deal with whatever shows up in life, to future proof yourselves, to be able to withstand whatever comes, comes across our way in life and not be caught up in the drama around us. So that's where I'm sort of coming from in the work I do, helping people get direction and clarity. And this session is going to be uh, very practical. And I encourage anyone who's listening in or watches the replay to just relax and absorb. Don't particularly need to do anything. I've got some practice sessions that I would encourage you to, to try out. But um, please just go with what I'm saying. And thank you very much for giving up time to focus on your self-care because it's absolutely critical. So this is what we're going to be sort of running through this sort of rough batting order. Um, a bit of a look back in the past year, my goodness, what a year it's been. A bit about checking in with ourselves, boundaries, mind-body connection, uh, what's energy about, and this word resilience is used an awful lot, and I'd like to say a bit more about that. What we can do to help ourselves small lifestyle changes make a massive difference the great news is we have choice in our lives sometimes it doesn't feel like it but there's a lot we can do to help ourselves and it's so important we do and then some tips to take away um, that you can put into practice very easily for yourselves so looking back on the past year well if anyone's ever asked us if the world could ever come to a standstill, we would have thought that they're absolutely crazy. But that's exactly what happened. So massive crisis um, we were surrounding us. And I call it Corona Coaster and Corona Pause because we ricochet between that roller coaster. I mean, it's massive change and all change brings some upheaval, but that was huge change. And interestingly, also the pause between all the activity. 
So we were thrown into this crisis, very little notice. Uh, a lot of us got very active and I was one of them, checking out research, checking out about the virus, lots of social media, lots of fake news. So between all the activity, there's also this strange pause that we all experienced and the whole world experienced it. So for us personally, but actually it's a global, global virus. And the lockdown causes, on the one hand, that created some safety for us because we were having to stay at home and not do very much. But what the pause probably has done for many of you is give you the opportunity to take a pause out on everyday life. Now, that had its pluses and its negatives because um, obviously it threw up, threw up time to reflect and think about what our lives were, what's going on in our lives and what's happening. But it was also very useful for a lot of people to have some healing in that time. So we've been through a year like no other and hopefully we'll have nothing as bad in the future. But in terms of our mind and bodies, uh, really took a battering in this time period because what our minds and bodies like is certainty and balance. And what happened in the past year has thrown us all out of balance, some more than others. So I'd say we're all in the same storm, but we're in different boats. And those boats will depend on your work circumstances and your life circumstances. So for example, a lot of people were having to homeschool. Um, a lot of partners um, who would normally go to the office to work were working from home. So it's a change in the home dynamics. Um, there were a number of people who of course got ill, uh, not able to see parents. There was some caring responsibility. Some parents may even been living with their adult children. So everyone was in a different situation. Some people were furloughed. Um, some people have lost their jobs. Uh, a whole range of situations. And it would depend of course on how you usually deal with change anyway. So we weren't all experiencing this crisis in the same way. So certainly the same storm, but different boats. Working from home has created its own challenges with regard to boundaries leaking. You know, we don't have the travel to work time that we did where sometimes that would give us some breathing space. Um, the fact that we're physically maybe sharing our homes with other people that we don't normally. This about switched on, you know, we're pretty much just switched on culture anyway, 24 seven switched on, but this is really um, become increasingly the case working from home. Uh, Zoom fatigue, there's an awful lot of research now about the Zoom fatigue and how much more tiring it is to conduct meetings on Zoom. And I certainly know from, from talking on webinars, it is more of a challenge doing it on, online uh, than being face to face with people. So, but a lot of, um, pressures, if you like, and potential stressors and working from home. There's also been some really fantastic, uh, fantastic qualities of working from home where a lot of people have actually improved their productivity and are healthier in many ways. And there isn't the time spent traveling or the expense of traveling. And it opens up our homes glo globally. Um, so we've got much more reach for connecting with people and it has been fantastic in, in connecting with people who are isolated. There's awful, an awful lot of fear that's been experienced in the past year as well with huge change like this. And I would say that the fear actually is as harmful as the virus itself because it is a vicious circle. The more we're fearful of something, the more our immune system is compromised. And of course, the more our immune system's compromised, we could be more susceptible to attaching the virus. So it's a bit, bit of a catch 22 there. And I've got a fear of the unknown with a question mark because we've always said that we fear the unknown, but what I'm asking really, and maybe you can think about this is, is it about fear of letting go of what's known, of the life we've known, of how we've done things? Because there's a lot of talk about going back to normal um, I don't think we will ever go back to normal. I don't think we can think of normal as, as being a, a sort of condition that's static. I think normal will change depending on what's going on in the world. So there's a lot of fear of letting go of what is comfortable, 
what we've come to know and fear of the unknown. And, and what I do is help people turn fear of the unknown into a sort of curiosity because we can't control what's going to show up, but we can control how we respond to it. So what have we learned since March last year? Well, we know that we can now expect the unexpected. That's very clear. The future's uncertain, but actually the future's always been uncertain. You know, but I think this past year has shown us uh, in spades um, just what can happen. So anything is possible, anything's up for grabs. We can't control what shows up, but we can control what's within our control. And I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, hopefully for most people, they've been able to have this time to think about what's really important in their lives and what isn't. And what isn't important, being able to let go of that. There's no point, we can't hold on to the future, the, the past as we knew it, because it's gone. So the more we're able to accept that things won't be the same again, then we're able to then adapt to what shows up. My last point about life being precious, I mean, my goodness, that's really been reinforced to us. When a number of people, uh, maybe some on this, uh, watching this, uh, have stared death in the face or they've lost loved ones uh, due to COVID. And I know that that's been particularly traumatic. I work as a bereavement volunteer, so I've supported people a lot through the past year where they haven't been able to grieve in a healthy way and they haven't been able to conduct funerals in the way you normally would. So uh, it's been a real wake up call for me um, that life is very precious and we need to make the best of it for as long as we can. But what's really going to uh, enable us to thrive rather than just about survive is to be able to adapt to any change. And I am just amazed at how much people have been able to adapt over the past year. Um, and that, that's fantastic. And we know we can, but it's being able to have the resources within us to be able to uh, withstand whatever comes up, no matter what it is. So that's a little look back on the past year. What I'd like you to think about now, just, just for yourself, it, it's really important that we take note of how we're feeling. And when we ask people, how are you? And the stock answer is fine. I usually say, well, well, how are you feeling really? And just by adding that word really onto the question gives that other person a chance to actually reflect on how they're feeling because so many people say they're feeling fine and they're really not feeling fine so we need to make it okay for people to say how they are feeling so noticing how we're feeling and just every so often check in with yourself and often our emotions and feelings are a great barometer they tell us what our head doesn't sometimes we don't get it in our heads sometimes. First of all, we feel it in our, our bodies and our, in our emotions. So if you think about being calm and focused at one end of a spectrum and overwhelmed or exhausted at the other end with, with all the variants in between those, those two polarities, think about where you are today, how you're feeling right now, today. And if you feel that you're anxious, worried, overwhelmed or exhausted, then just recognize that, acknowledge it. Because it isn't something we can shy away from. It's, we can begin to do something about it if we are feeling those feelings that are causing stress and tension. Um, the important thing is to really begin to think about what's going on for us and how we're feeling, noticing it and checking in every so often. So um, I mentioned about boundaries. I mean, this is so important and having space for ourselves so that you're not in a place of fear. So you're able to feel strong in your own uh, connection with yourself and, and your, your power really. And recently the boundaries have certainly been eroded in terms of physical space that you would have your own boundary if you're in a workplace or even working from home where you're not sharing physical space with other family members. But also I mentioned time where I think for many people because they're working at home and not traveling to work, they've worked incredibly long hours. And 
other people who they may be members of the same team, they have expectations that you're going to be working longer hours. So a lot of people are feeling pretty tired, if not exhausted. So there hasn't been too much respect for our own time or other people's time. And also meetings. Um, there seem to be more and more back-to-back -back meetings, obviously on uh, online platforms. And that's really draining. Um, not taking time out to process what's happened in one meeting and then go straight on to the next meeting. And there's been so much research done about um, how stressful it can be looking at a screen all the time. Because let's be honest, we're not usually, usually looking at ourselves as much as we do on screen or other people. And you're in a box there and you can't sort of move around very easily. So respecting meeting times and um, having some gaps between meetings is absolutely essential. And I would say because we're sitting and not moving, it's important to you know even take a couple of minutes away between meetings to stretch, to go outside, to make a drink, whatever, just to so that we've got some energy there in our bodies. Now the other types of boundaries are um, are really about um, having that presenteeism, you know, working longer hours. And I would say that people who are passionate sometimes about their work find it really difficult to create these boundaries because, and I, I was one of them in the past, I'm a recovering workaholic, I have to say. Um, but so it is about, yes, have a passion for your work, but actually you've got to switch off from it because your passion can become all consuming. And it's very difficult sometimes for those people to create the, the healthy boundaries. And I think a number of people are in that position. So it's about um, having a balance, you know, taking time out and be careful of that passion. In terms of solutions for creating boundaries, I call it personal policies. You have your own policy that might be after an hour or an hour maximum, I'm going to step away from my screen and go outside, have a, watch the birds, do something to switch off. Or it could be I'm not working later than five o'clock, six o'clock every, every weekday or um, every evening. There are a number of personal policies you can have. It's just about us getting some sort of discipline and keeping ourselves safe in mind and body and having that downtime. Uh, the other boundaries or the solutions to um, getting some sort of health healthy practice if you like i call it natural rhythm it could be routine is about letting go of anything that's getting in your way of um progressing in your life you know, it could be old thought patterns it could be your inner critic it could be just knowing what you can control and what you can't control and be really clear about it I certainly know that, you know, I haven't always been disciplined about what I can't control. And at the moment, the past year, there's been so much outside of our control. And it is easy to get caught up in that. And actually, we can't do anything about it. So what I do now is look at what I've got ahead of me or around me, work out what's exactly is within my control, what I could do something about or the things that I absolutely can't do anything about. And I just let them go completely. And that's incredibly liberating if you're able to just not pay any attention, because the more we pay attention to something, it's like fueling the fire. It's just there all the time. And we're wasting energy that we need for our health. The power hours I've set up is where I've got a very disciplined approach to working. And for an hour, for example, I say, well, this, this is my focus today. Nothing's going to interrupt it. I turn off my phone. Uh, I tell people around me, I don't want to be disturbed in this time, but creating power hours for yourself can make a massive difference and you then feel that feeling of achievement. You've actually done something in an hour and then you can build them up sort of during the day and during the week. The other thing I would suggest is about working out what your triggers are. What is it that throws you off balance? Who is it? I have to say, from my point of view, it can be members of my family. It's often members of family that can be triggers for us in moving our, us into a sort of an out of control state at times. What is it that triggers you?
where are you triggered? Are there, are there particular places you're triggered or what sort of situation? And when are you triggered? Do you work better in the morning or do you work better in the evening? So working out, as I said before, checking in with yourself, working out when you work best and when you don't and adapting your, your routine around that, your life routine and your work routine. So this is something that's a really important area, but having space for yourself, breathing space, physical space, emotional space. And I often say to people, if you have eight hours sleep a night, what do you do in the 16 hours when you're not asleep? How much are you punctuating downtime in those 16 hours when you're awake? Because uh, if we can get that balance right, uh, we can say that we're, we're really living from well-being state and we're thriving. But it's, get, it's having that discipline and having that focus to, to put some of these things in place. So um, this is, we live in two worlds, actually. This is a wonderful world we can tap into, blue-green space. And there's been lots of research recently about the health benefits of blue-green space particularly blue space. So being near coastal areas where there's water um, uh, is, is the top, if you like, in terms of well-being benefits, mentally, physically, and nurturing us. Green space is second best, you know, being in, in woodland, being on moors, just outside space. And just looking at that, uh, I find that incredibly relaxing. So the other world we live in is a world which is chaos, really with lots of noise, lots of interference around us, lots of social media, uh, lots of trauma, and that's around us all the time. So it's like a, a vat of acid, if you like, bubbling around us all the time, and we're part of it. But the other world we can tap into, and we probably don't enough, is this, this, this sort of life force, really, this blue-green space around us in nature. And it could be a metaphor, really, for things you do to switch off, things that recharge your batteries on the run, and um, this is a space that um, we can access when we are feeling particularly fraught. I know for me, being in nature, is incredibly important. And there's so many health benefits of being in nature and other ways of relaxing. So I've got about settling the mind and relaxing the body. The mind and body, I mean, it's one, we're one human system. We can't cut ourselves in two. So that's why my work is about settling the mind and relaxing the body not just talking to someone, because sometimes I've spoken to someone, been talking to someone, and they don't take in a word I'm saying because their minds are so frazzled and whirring all the time, they don't hear anything. If I ask them to begin to release tension in their bodies, miraculously their mind begins to settle because it's well nigh impossible to have a very active, agitated body and a settled mind. And equally, it's impossible really to have a, you know, a very frazzled mind and a very relaxed body. So we're one system and that's why we need to think of ourselves as one system. And our bodies work really well when they're in balance, our mind and bodies. When they're out of balance, there's a blueprint, there's a self-correcting facility, if you like, in our bodies that gets us back into balance. However, going through what we've gone through in the past year or any other trauma in life where you're actually ricocheting between lots of activity and not enough downtime that can really knock us off balance and out of control and that's why we need to begin to look at how we how we restore our energy and how we heal our body minds and bodies together so i'm going to take you into um, a short practice now it's a short breathing practice because the fact that we breathe is miraculous and we usually don't have to think about it. Um, so if you just sort of settle yourselves really and, um, and just have your feet flat on, the, flat on the ground, just relax your shoulders and just gently close your eyes. Okay. Just noticing your normal breathing. Just breathing in and breathing away. Sometimes it's shallow. Sometimes it's sharp, deep. 
Sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's more loud. Just breathing in and breathing away. It's natural for thoughts to come into your mind at times. Just let them pass through and focus on your breathing. Notice the silence within your breathing. Just breathing in and breathing away. Relaxing with every out breath. And now just take in a deep breath and expand your tummy, breathe in through your nose, hold it and breathe out through your mouth to a count of five, two, three, four, five. And again, breathing in through your nose, hold it and count out to five through your mouth. Two, three, four, five. Once again, breathing in through your nose, hold it and count out to five. Two, three, four, five. Just return to normal breathing now. Breathing in and breathing away. Noticing how you're feeling in your mind and in your body. Relaxing with every breath. Breathing in and breathing away. Noticing the silence and the calm that surrounds you. Now just noticing how you're feeling in your mind and in your body. And when you're ready, Gently opening your eyes and return to the room. Thank you. Now, that's the sort of thing you can do, what I call recharge on the run. It's something you can do in the moment where if you're feeling particularly anxious, you might be expecting a phone call that you think is going to be difficult or a meeting with someone. You have that heart sink where you're having a meeting with someone who you know might press your buttons. Uh, that's the sort of thing you can do very quickly. And the breath is uh, one of the most amazing systems in our bodies that's self-healing. And what it does is when we sort of breathe in, particularly taking a deep breath, we are able to reduce our blood pressure, our heart rate and our stress hormones are reduced. And the flip side of that is we have increase in our physical and mental health and immunity. So if you notice, I asked you to do five out breaths on a count of five. What happens when we're breathing deeply uh, and slowly like that is it activates a master nerve, which is called the vagus nerve in our bodies. And that is what controls all of our vital organs. It vibrates the vagus nerve. So it doesn't happen if you're not breathing deeply and slowly. It needs that, that sort of pace and the depth to vibrate this nerve. That's the master organ in our body that controls all of our vital functions and relaxes us. So that's the sort of uh, the physiology or the science behind why we do the deep breathing like that. And uh, it has lots of benefits. So uh, just a bit about science there, because I think we're all into science at the moment. So let's move on from that. So um, this is a, a model that I love. It's from the Energy Project and it's showing us how we use our energy. So if you notice, um, if you look at the right hand side there, this is where the positive energy is, those boxes. We have a performance box at the top and renewal box beneath that. So 
ideally we'd like to be living on that right hand side where we have high energy performing well peak performance um, and the positive energy is lower energy it's renewing us so we're, we're got everything in balance if you like we're performing well high performance but we're also taking time out that renewal box is taking time out to switch off what happens a lot of the time um, is that people who are high performing um, often overperform and I call it hyper resilience if you like um, well they stay in that high performance box but they don't take enough time out to recharge the battery so this model actually explains it really well so if you look on the left hand side um we'll go on to the next slide so we can be high performing but something triggers us something happens in our lives and a lot of our triggers are fear-based fear is massive in our ill health mental health and physical health something triggers us and it tips us into survival mode so we're no longer performing at our best we are in a situation where things are getting pretty stressful and a lot of us have been there probably are still there at the moment and want to try and get out of it so that's when the resources we have within us aren't sufficient to deal with the demands on us and that's really what resilience is about it's having the resources within us to deal with any setbacks whatever crops up and being able to, to come back in a healthy way it's about having harmony in our lives and um you know being able to withstand pressures but but not uh, without the important thing about resilience is a lot written about it at the moment spoken about it it's not always active resilience to be really resilient is to renew ourselves as well to have that downtime to have time out and relax that's where real resilience is it isn't always about being active however moving around the box if we don't look at how we're feeling at survival mode and do something about it we will go into burnout and that is really not a good place to be i call this the pernicious creep factor of burnout and it does creep up on you i was there in corporate life i didn't see the signs i was a workaholic i loved my work got a real adrenaline buzz from um the pace you know all being in it together uh, it was an unhealthy high fix i thought i was invincible um i also i did lots of sports so i was being active but what i wasn't doing is switching off i wasn't taking time out and this was a lesson i'd learned from a friend of mine i worked with who was 40 at the time he was very work focused didn't smoke didn't drink had a healthy diet went to the gym a lot lots of sport he ended up having a pacemaker fitted at the age of 40 because he didn't have enough renewal and take time out and this is my plea to everyone who keeps active all the time and is very driven at work and maybe a bit of a workaholic like I was you really need to give our minds and bodies time out and switch off it's time well spent believe me so burnout can creep up on you and actually when it happened to me and I look back what had gone on in my personal life and in my work life and and how i was responding to all of that i was surprised that i didn't see it coming so that's my plea to everyone please please don't get to that stage because it's a very difficult place to get out of unless you really look after yourself and get support um all our arrows all roads lead back to renewal that's the great news at any stage in this graph you can get back to renewal, but it's having that wake up call in time, you know, and that's why I said at the start, check in with yourselves, notice how you're feeling. If you're not feeling the way you, you think you need to be feeling, then please do something about it, get help. There's lots you can do for yourselves, but don't leave it. So renewal is massively important. So I like this, en this energy chart because it, it, it's really clear what it's saying and, you know, it, it's a real lesson for us. So creating that balance is incredibly important. So um, any lifestyle changes, I would say you could start small and build. Don't try and eat the whole elephant. Um, letting go is so important. You know, I just know for myself so much that I've hung on to over the years. You know, it might be things that my, my parents said, uh, things I learned at school, all sorts of things, beliefs. 
you know, absolutely let go. And over the past few years, I've really created a life that's very simple for me. One of my watchword is simplicity. Keep things simple. Don't have stuff that you don't need. Let it go. And if that means people who drain your energy, and a lot of people do, then you have to make a choice on whether you want them in your life or whether you want to let go of that relationship. Not so easy for your family, but I have done it with some people. Um, absolutely look at what you can control. Because there, you know, be very disciplined about it. I've spoken about boundaries and personal policies, screen-free time, absolutely essential. This also applies to um, getting good sleep hours. You know, they say recommend that at least two hours before you go to bed, don't have a screen on. Um, I don't do that all the time, but it's usually at least an hour before. But screen-free time because so many, uh, it's quite addictive. Social media screen time is quite addictive, and it gets our heads very busy and it's difficult to switch off getting outside in natural light incredibly healing uh, lots of vitamin d in natural light and serotonin which helps us to um to keep that happy healthy hormone being in stillness whatever that is for you i mean i'm obviously i'm a big meditator i uh, have a daily meditation practice but being in stillness can be doing your garden it can be reading a good book. It can be needlepoint. Whatever gives you that stillness, then do it. Find it. Um, finding your purpose. Obviously, I call it True North because that's the name of my company. But really finding what's important to you in life. Yeah, what what, what you what do you want to do in this life? And find that direction. And if anything doesn't fit with that, then then don't do it. I've been very disciplined now recently about, you know, what it is I'm here to do and and focusing on that and letting everything else go that, that doesn't fit with that. Find what brings you joy. Um, I had a number of years where I was very physically immobile and my physical health was very poor and I was unable to do a lot of things I used to do in the past. And what I've been able to do in lockdown is learn how to move again actually uh, stuff i'm doing online qigong five rhythms dance belly dancing um all sorts of things i'm now able to do and i think that gives me a lot of joy the other thing gives me joy is singing and i used to belong to a choir before lockdown so i was part of gareth malone's great british home chorus which was absolutely wonderful because it's a real team activity as well but Work out for yourself what gives you a balance in life. Create a balance that works for you and actually where the joy is. Because life can be very short and it's so important that we, we live it in the way that we deserve for ourselves and create it for yourself. Okay, I'm now going into a second practice, which is a little bit of that tensing the body and some breathing. What I recommend is you move away um, from a, a table or where you're sitting so you're able to stretch your legs out when I give the uh, give the uh, instruction, if you like. So create some space for yourself, basically. Um, and just again, just relax. Just sit back in your chair, feet on the ground, put your shoulders down and just close your eyes gently. Okay, just begin to breathe gently, breathing in and breathing away. Just breathing in any positive energy around you and letting go of anything that's been blocking you. Breathing in again. Breathing in positive thoughts of the future and breathing out any worries of the past. Just let them float away. Again, breathing in the here and the now and breathing out what's past. And the more you breathe, the more you're settling in your chair, just noticing any tension flowing away with every in-breath. 
Relaxing your shoulders, relaxing your head, just letting any tension flow away. Now taking a deep breath into your tummy, push your legs forward, tightening your thighs, tightening your buttocks, breathe out. Taking another deep breath, stretch out your hands, make a fist, tighten your shoulders, screw up your face, hold, 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 and release. Take in three deep breaths. Releasing any tension in your body. Letting those muscles relax. Letting any pressure flow away. And just breathing normally now. Noticing how you're feeling as you sit in your chair. Now taking a deep breath, stretch out your legs, tighten your buttock, tighten your thighs and calves, breathe out, another deep breath, stretch out your hand, arms, your, tighten your fists, screw up your shoulders, screw up your face, hold, hold, hold and release, release, relax, taking three deep healing breaths melting into your chair letting any tension just flow away feeling peace and feeling calm noticing the stillness of your breathing flowing in and flowing away. Now taking a deep breath, tighten your thighs, your calves, your feet, stretch out your legs, breathe out. Taking another deep breath, stretch out your arms, make a fist, tighten your shoulders, screw up your face, hold, hold, hold and release. Let it all flow away and take three deep healing breaths. Flowing in and flowing away. Noticing the peace and the stillness within your mind and within your body. letting it all just melt away. Oh. Okay, and in your own time, just melt, just return to your seat and come away from the practice. Thank you. A little bit of an energizer. Um, what that type of exercise does, it shows us how to hold our breath and release our breath. Sometimes in life, when everything feels out of control, all we can do is control our breathing. And sometimes that's all we have and that's enough. So that's for us to be able to control our breathing when everything else around us is outside our control. And when everything's outside our control, the stress hormones increase, the cortisol, the adrenaline, really unhealthy hormones. That's like a vat of acid that sort of corrodes our minds and bodies. So sometimes we just have to control our breathing. Um, the tension, creating the tension in our muscles, the more we're able to feel how that feels, we can then know how it feels to not be tense. And when I learned these practices, when I did this, I mean, I was diagnosed with a heart condition 
competition in 2011 and um, I had high blood pressure. When I learned these exercises, when I was tensing like that, I could really feel my palpitations in my heart. So that was reminding me that my body was probably in that feeling of tension for a long time. So it was reminded to me that actually the more we can relax our muscles, the more we then release stress. So that particular exercise was about taking control and holding tension and then letting it go. And hopefully you will have felt that release and that melting, if you like, in letting go of that tension, because that's how a number of people, what they hold in their bodies most of their lives. And that's why the physical and, and you know, mental health illnesses build up. So the more we can release tension in our muscles and, and relax, the more our stress go, goes down. So that's really what, what that's about. So I just wanted to give you a couple of different times of practices and, and showing you how I work with the body as well as switching off the mind, the crazy mind. So it's, it's all connected, obviously, very important. So um, there's a lot of talk about well-being, and I, I thought to myself, well, what is it really? Because it's one of these things that's difficult to put into words. So I thought about what it meant for me, and I just share this with you to see, give, get you to ponder on it, really. Well-being isn't found outside of us. It's found within each of us. It's not a journey we take to reach a destination. It's an energy. For me, it's all about energy that ebbs and flows with the quality of our connection with ourselves and with others. And importantly, connection with others. I mean, that is so important to our well-being. that social connection. We are human, we're social animals. Um, but for me, it's something that's always with us. A lot of people talk about well-being as if it isn't with them, that has gone somewhere. It's like resilience. Um, we have these things. We're born with these things. And that's part of our life force and our blueprint. But it ebbs and flows. And well-being ebbs and flows, uh, as does resilience. So for me, it is about energy. And um, we're surrounded by energy in the world around us and within us. So these are my sort of five takeaway tips, really. Uh, reminder to all of us that we're designed to thrive. You know, uh, we have this wonderful blueprint um, and it can get out of balance. And when it does, it's finding what works for each of us to bring us back into balance and have that harmony within us. Noticing, I've mentioned that a few times, I, I will mention it a lot. Know what our triggers are, because we all have different triggers. Know what it creates balance for us know what upsets that balance and, and and do something about it accepting what is is huge there's a lot of stuff we can't control and the more we try to resist things we can't control we're say, wasting a lot of energy that we need for ourselves to remain healthy um, so really accepting what we can't control and, and moving on and, and dealing with what's within our control and I said they're about controlling and letting go of anything else. Um, letting go of this, this notion that we'll go back to the past, the way things were in the past. The sooner we can accept that that isn't going to happen, uh, we need to let that go. The past is gone. The, the, the present's here and the future's still to come. And we can future-proof ourselves with some of the sort of things that I've mentioned here about being able to shape our futures, no matter what shows up, because we know that anything's possible now. We need to be prepared in our minds and bodies to be able to deal with whatever shows up, no matter what. Reminder about topping up our energy, to, to keep that topped up and finding ways of doing that, find ways that work for, for everyone. And that balance between being active, on that sort of the chart there, but the performance, Yes, high performance is fantastic, but actually we need time out. We need to renew ourselves and have rest. So with resilience comes rest and renewal. And that's a very important equation if we talk about resilience. The blue green nature is massive, absorbing it, being out in it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, do, do, what, do what you want to do in, in nature, whether it's playing golf, whether it's you know, boating, just whatever works for you. And there are other ways you can, can soak up those energies by obviously meditating in silence, painting, all sorts of things. So let's make 20, 2021 your year to thrive and have a sort of bit of a wake up call and, and a check. Now we've been through you know, a very challenging year 
and see what's important in your life. What you want to keep from the past and stuff we do want to keep, but things that you don't want to carry on doing uh, or do less of. So uh, just to say, get in touch anyone, if I can help you, whether it's uh, coaching or stress programs or any webinars or workshops. So delighted to hear from you. If you any questions, uh, you might put them in the chat, but you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm there as a 4D coach because I work in four dimensions. And um, obviously that's my website address on the slide there. So you can get in touch that way. So I think I might even have finished in time. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. That was absolutely great. I'm sure it was quite traumatic for everyone watching my screwed up face if you peeped and had your eyes open. But and mine was screwed up as well. <laughs> that, that's the closest I've come to is actually falling asleep in, in, in the middle of one of our webinars. You have the most relaxing voice. I can't for the right reason, Faye. That <laughs> yeah, no, was excellent. Thank you. Um, we have had some questions. I've been scribbling them down as we've gone. So. I mean, one from me to start off, really. Have you found yourself to be particularly busy since COVID started in sort of in the last 12 months? Or, or would you say that people are still in denial, really? Um, I, I think I, it's a mix, uh, FA. Uh, I, I've been very busy with people who are bereaved um, because I support a bereavement charity as a volunteer. Um, so I've been very busy in that respect. And it's getting, people are beginning to, wake up a bit more now realizing that actually their well-being isn't just a nice to have it's absolutely essential and they know that if they don't put themselves first they're no good to themselves or to anyone else so um i think it's been a time like and i would say that also with people say frontline workers key workers particularly in the healthcare sector and i, I spent my last 12 years corporate life in the nhs um who've been on the front line, who have experienced a lot of trauma, they haven't really been able to process that. So that's been put on the back burner. A lot of grief for people has been put on the back burner because they haven't been able to grieve in a, a healthy way. So like a lot of things that happen in life, there's often a time lag, you know, until yeah. it really, I, I, mean, I, I just, you know, I just hope we're able to be there to support people when they need it because um, it's going to come up. I heard about some organizations who are gonna stop their wellbeing programs for their staff when the <laughs> pandemic ends, but actually, you know, it, it almost has to continue. It's, it's yeah. not something that's gonna stop when the when all the vaccines are done or the virus is gone. No, so I think there. I'm getting- lot, There'll be quite a lot of fallout, I think. Um, sort of. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah, so, yeah. Of, yeah, so, okay, next question. Um, can we, as a species, adjust to lack, a lack of uncertainty? Because we have had an unprecedentedly long period of time of uncertainty. And can we, as a species, adapt to uncertainty and, and allow that to become the new norm? Absolutely. I think we have to. I absolutely think we have to. We have to be able to adapt to that. Now we have the, um, the hindsight or the foresight um, about what's happened in the past year. Uh, most of us have one way or another got through it and adapted and we absolutely have to be able to adapt and the only way we can do that Faye is by um, responding to what shows up and not reacting to oh, have our own, <laughs> yeah to have our own it's easy to say in a crisis but now that we've been through what we have and and we know we, we can get through it most of us it's absolutely about um, settling our minds and, and keeping our bodies in sync so that we don't get fearful because fear doesn't come into our heads if our minds are settled and calm. It, it takes you to a different place. It just, you know, you don't get caught up in the, the drama of outside life. We absolutely have to adapt. And that also relates to our relationship with nature. Nature is not for us to usurp and control. Nature is a living being. And the more we can change our relationship with nature the natural world as well, the more we will all live in harmony and thrive. Mm. Absolutely, we have to be adapting, yeah. Devon's a great spot to be doing it, I have to say. Having... Absolutely, yes. So, okay, I mean, you, you mentioned sort of uh, same storm, different boats. I mean, that is, I think, very much the case and it's really highlighted the sort of polarity in, in our society more widely. But how, how do you sort of, how do we um, learn to promote tolerance and understanding um, across our workplace? 
um, because yeah, everyone's that's had a very different experience and it's a very personalized experience to them as that's, well. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I would say with good leadership, um, mm. I'm quite critical of leadership. I think there's a lot of leadership models that are past their day. We need to have leaders who are much more compassionate and caring and prepared to be vulnerable themselves. Because if you can, if you feel that for yourself, you, you see even others then. Um, there'll be a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, particularly if there's going to be hybrid working in organisations going forward. There'll be a lot of work that needs to be done to, to help people increase their self-awareness. And that tolerance is so important. Um, but I, I think it, 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 it will take time, but it will build with the right support from, from leaders and also you know, training for individuals in organisations. Because at the yeah. end of the day, we are, you know, what we've had experience in the past year, we're not only responsible for ourselves, but we're responsible for each other. Because whatever we thought or did had an impact on other people. And yeah. I think that's something that maybe we'll reflect on going forward, that, you know, we, we are all in this together and we will move forward together. But yeah, we're human after all, but it, it's going to be a challenge, but it needs people who can... Uh, to hold that space for people and, you know, facilitate those differences and, and value those differences rather than creating barriers. Yeah. And uh, one last question. Um, um, you said life is precious, and I think we've all come to very much appreciate that over the last year, especially. Um, do you can do you think that motivates in the workplace or demotivates in the workplace? Or how do you, how do you sort of balance the sort of the life is precious sort of seize the day attitude and apply that to the workplace? Yeah, well, you know, organisations are only organisations because they're comprised of people, and you know, I I, I feel very strongly that people will will realise that we take all of ourselves to work, you know the positive and, and the not so positive we don't sort of switch off our, our personal self when we go to work and I think that this has shown that the fact that we a lot of us are working living at work from home you know those boundaries have become blurred and there'll be hybrid working going forward and um, I do I feel that I hope there's more of an appreciation for your life is your work life and your personal life and all other parts of your life. And we can only perform and thrive if all of those have a balance and, and have that acceptance because it's, um, this is where a lot of stress issues arise where the, the person, the whole person isn't appreciated in the work environment. And I've worked some really tough work environments in, in private sector where people weren't valued as, as, as human beings. It, it's about restoring humanity to the workplace. We absolutely need to do that and change the leadership models so that that's a priority and well-being, you know, well-being at work and in every part of our life is the only thing that's going to um, create success in every level. Yeah, hear, hear. <laughs> I think that's a, a great message to end on. So I'll just sort of once once again, thank you very much, Anne. That was absolutely brilliant. I really enjoyed it. And I'm sure a lot of people will have the benefit of that um, sort of retrospectively. Pleasure. We'll post this onto YouTube and we'll share the, uh, the link and the slides with um, everyone that's registered today. Just remains for me to say that um, same time next month, uh, Wednesday, the 5th of uh, May, 11 o'clock, we'll be talking to the careers and employability team at the University of Plymouth about how to get the best skills into your business so um, student placements graduate recruitment on, and everything in between so um, we'll look forward to seeing everybody there and um, many thanks for joining us thank you very much Faye